Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. I would like to call an official meeting of the board between Guy present, yeah, present. Clint present, Sharon present. Pre- oh, sorry, I forgot to answer for myself. Yes. Present, special listener friend at home or in the car. Present. Okay. Chang couple- on Facebook. <laughs> Literally so, on Facebook. It's not even weeks, a joke. A couple of weeks ago, while you guys were on holiday, we yeah. got our annual ratings back. Yeah, and we did very well. I'm very proud of the whole team, and everyone did a good team effort, and it was great. Well, you know what, mate? What? Um, we don't have any time for that braggy crap around here. Yeah. Because someone on this team has really, really let the show, the station, and themselves Cut down. Cut to the chase, Chase Dog. I've been on holiday. Was it me? Should I not have come back? I've got the stats. Clint, Rotorua, your hometown. Mm-hmm. Shout out, Kia Manaki Tunga. Do quite the spirit. well. Do quite well. We're, ha- we're happy. We're, we're happy with what spirit. we what we got back from Rotorua. We're happy with. Okay, did so, we do good? Yes, so that means that you get a gold star next to your hometown board. Did we get some more lessons in Rotorua? Yes, we did. We got a couple oh, more. Manaki Tunga. I know. It was really good because oh, clearly your family, your family had a couple more kids, so it worked out great. Good great news. Class. Uh, my hometown, Timaru, sadly, uh, they don't even, you know, look there because obviously they know that we're, we're smashing it up because um, everyone misses me and Timaru. Mm. Yeah. Um, everyone being my nana. And then we well go done. to... Uh, How do we do in Suva in Fiji, uh, Chang's hometown? Good. Stop trying to distract me from what we're talking about. Okay, here. okay, okay. Continue. Guy's hometown, Nelson, oh, wonderful. However. Lovely, beautiful, sunny old Nelson. My favourite place. Guy, you have managed to... Where I was born. You've managed to completely half... What? Our listeners in Nelson. Yeah. Your hometown. Yeah. Where you were supposed to make a real effort. Yeah. And instead we've now found out... Yeah. ...that your hometown hates you. What? Hates me. They hate, they hate you. All, we're a team effort here. I Equal hate. Can I tra- look at these numbers? I tried really hard to get Nelson, win Nelson over by giving them a $1 discount on the South Street Gallery that my uncle owns. And that didn't even help because oh my God. people people are just like... Guy? No. Yeah. These are the worst ratings we've ever had in Nelson. <laughs> and this is the first time we've ever got ratings in Nelson with you on the show. Screw you, Nelson. I hate you. No, that's no, what got us into this no, situation oh, in the first I place. Mean, sorry, I mean, I like you. And, like, I've come up with ways after to, to try and make for this... I After trying to make this better, because I rang Uncle Michael. I was like, Uncle Michael, what, what can we do for the guy Sharon Clint listeners? Can we get a $2 discount for the listeners? He said, no, Sharon, $1 is quite enough. And I was like, okay, sweet as. So I couldn't do anything there. But I can't figure out what... You have done wrong, so I think we need to have an open forum right now. Okay. On, oh, good. On 0800 The Edge, or text us at 3343. Some feedback. What do you think the guy has done wrong in his hometown, Nelson, to make them just hate him this much? And I don't think you need to be from Nelson to contribute to this. No! Because everybody has an opinion. Yeah. And, Guy, please take this as, as constructive criticism. Okay. Because we want to do good in the future. Okay, well, personally, can I say Nelson's one of the most wonderful places in the world? You just said too, late, mate, too late, mate. It's too late. The rating's already out. I'll get the ball rolling. It's your face. <laughs> my face is causing the problem. Well, this yeah. is radio. You can't even see my face. All right. Well, 0800 The Edge now. Text us at 3343. Why do you think Nelson hate Guy? Mm, why has his hometown abandoned him in his hour of need? <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, what do you think that Guy's doing wrong? I don't think he's doing anything wrong. I just think he's misunderstood. Why hey, do you think he's thank you. Man? Why do you think you he's either- misunderstood? Because you either love him or you hate him. He's just got a dry sense of humour. He makes me laugh a lot. Yeah, one of the many ways that I'm like Tupac. Okay, Alyssa, <laughs> Alyssa, um, are you in Nelson? No. Ah, oh, does it out you. then? Does See, it Alyssa, can you possibly I move li- to Nelson? <laughs> I listen to you guys every day. Oh. Well, after Fletch and Vaughan left, I wasn't sure I was going to, and then it's like, no, Guy's on, and he just makes me laugh. Oh, Aww, well, thank you well, very much. We really much. appreciate it. I'm thanks, gonna, Alyssa. I'm going to assume that compliment by association, so <laughs> thanks a lot, Alyssa. <laughs> we, we, well, we do most of the work, so Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. Lucy, what do you think it is about Guy that's making Nelson hate him? Uh, I came home from work um, about a month ago, and um, I caught my grandmother and Guy getting it on. <laughs> 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 How old is your grandma, Lucy? 92. You had sex with a 92 year old woman. Well, according to Lucy, I did, yeah. You're a very dark horse, Guy Williams. We never know what you're up to. Crazy. What did Granddad think about that, Lucy? Granddad um, had a heart attack and had to be rushed to the hospital. Oh, Jesus. Goodness Guy's goals. a very big man as well. Was Grandma okay after that? <laughs> no, of course she wasn't. Libby. Oh, Guy. Lucy, yeah. that's hilarious. Libby's up next. What do you think? 
I think that guy is a secret man whore. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Not another one. Well, obviously, if he if he's a grandma trucker, then obviously it's te- a yeah, terrible guy. All, he's always got something in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That is, a, that is a hit segment. That's true. Uh, text from the text machine. Uh, hey, guy, you're a knob, mate, and that's why everyone hates you. Oh, that's so nice that your mum texts in. Yeah, it is, it is pretty lovely. Yeah, nice to hear from your mama, Williams. Um, hey, hey, Shaz, not sure why you're picking on guy. The fella only works like 20% of the time, so it's hard to blame him for not doing anything. <laughs> uh, when you, we all have our hometown, hometown responsibility, and he's just he's killing it. That same text message claims that Timaru can't even get there. Well, that's a bloody lie, because if my grandma can get it, if my nana can get it on Macaulay Street, then you guys can get it anywhere. Sometimes they can get it. It depends where the clouds are in Timaru on the day. Also, it depends on what angle you have the coat hanger on your car. <laughs> yeah, and whether the guy riding the penny farthing on the treadmill over in Omaru as to whether the generator can get it over to Timaru. You have no idea where Timaru and Omaru are, do you? Yeah, they're, they're, they're down not, south. Yeah. yeah, they're around there. They're not that close. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Go so Sharon what, and Clint. what can I do to improve? We don't even know! I think it just be anyone but yourself. I think stop <laughs> Sleeping with grandmothers and yeah. we'll be sweating. That wasn't true! Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the urge. So, anyway, you haven't told us yet. How was your trip, Clint? Well, I'm glad you asked, Chaz Dog. It all started out with a visit to Los Angeles where we ended up having lunch at a table directly across from American Idol's very own Randy Jackson. Wow, that's awesome! I know, right? And he was like, Dog, you got the best singing voice I ever heard. I'm gonna sign you up right now. Wait, what? And he hadn't even heard me sing, but I was all like, okay, and I signed up anyway. Next thing you know, I'm seeing the halftime show at the Super Bowl. Oh, say can you see by the burning light What's so proudly we sound What's so star standing bright No, no you weren't. Yeah, I was. And it went so good that I got a deal to tour the whole world, which I did. I visited 48 countries on 10 different continents. There's only seven continents. And saved more African kids than Bono. Then Barack Obama was all like, Come back to America so you can lead the war on terror. So I did. And I won it. So they gave me a knighthood. A knighthood in America. Yup, presented by Katy Perry. Then we pashed, and it was hot, and she proposed, and then there was a massive after party. And I was the DJ, and Calvin Harris was there, and he was all like, Oh, Clint, teach me how to be as good a DJ as you are. And I did, because I'm a good dude. Then I finished my set with a fist pump, and fireworks came out of my fist. And everyone cheered, and it was like the best holiday ever! (sighs) Right, so... That stuff actually happened. Definitely. In two weeks. In one day. Well done, Matt. Thanks, guys. But it sure is good to be back. The previous events may or may not have happened. The Edge is in no way responsible for claims made about Clint's holiday. Our apologies go out to Katy Perry, Randy Jackson, and the entire worldwide community. Guys, Sharon and Clint. On the Edge. Great text with us got. Tell Sharon to get her tits out to liven the show up a bit. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> radio. Spice it up. It's radio, guys. Okay. Hey, I'm willing to try new things. Let's give it a go. Okay, Sharon, get your tits out. Three, two, one, wow! Whoa, it's crazy! This they is... were the greatest tits anyone's ever seen. Oh, I am looking Nothing at them. Nothing like a bit of casual sexism on, on a Monday. <laughs> I, I miss them. Can we get... No, no we're, we're, it's uh, yeah, sexist. It's sexist. Yeah, no that's what we're going with. you to get your D out, are they? No. I wish someone would, but no one <laughs> ever does. How disappointing! Doesn't, doesn't stop me, though, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I've asked because I'm really interested because you're so tall. Oh! <laughs> uh, uh. Like a mushroom. <laughs> Music Awards, that's what we're talking about. So the Music Awards um, uh, made a big announcement today. They yeah. announced who the hosts are for this year's VNZ MAs. Yeah. They're going to be hosted by um, Shannon Ryan. She's and, returning. And please say me, please say me, please say me, please say me. And a guy whose name rhymes with guy, Die Damn it. Hemwood. Damn it. Now, I was quite excited when I woke up this morning, guys, because I got about 10 or 15 tweets saying to me, congratulations on hosting the VNZ MAs. And I was like, oh my god, no one told me I was hosting the VNZMAs. And then I realised that for about the millionth time in my life that people thought I was Shannon Ryan. (laughs) 
Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I was really excited. I, I was thinking, why did no one tell me? Like, no one's even... Is this yeah. like a surprise job for me? Re- but, uh, yeah, no, it's just that people... Because Shannon and I used to work on 4 Live together and our names sound the same, and so people always call us the wrong name. I really enjoy uh, your uh, Wild Bean Cafe segments on the block. No, that's Shannon Ryan Your pointless as well. challenges are wonderful, though. No, that's Shannon Ryan Still as well. Shannon, Congratulations okay. on your... Um, Engagement? No, no, that's Shannon Ryan. Well. I've been married for two years. That's oh. Shannon. But congratulations, Shannon and Justin. That's very exciting. Die. No. Oh. Die didn't get engaged to Shannon. Wait, wait, wait. Who's getting engaged to? Shannon, Shannon Ryan. Shannon Ryan. To Die Henwood. No. no, they're hosting the music awards together. Okay, and so who's Justin? Her fiance. Justin Timberlake. They're on the Women's Day of the Sweet, looking very beautiful. Oh, that's lovely. But, um, I, I really urge everyone, please go pick up the Women's Day this week and just check out the story on Shannon and her new fiance. Also, there's a story about JJ in there. Just so then you'll know who Shannon is and people will finally realise <laughs> that, we're, that we're two <laughs> different people. <laughs> oh, guy Shannon and Clint. It's the no, it's Megan Shannon. Shannon's up next. It's Sharon! <laughs> Shannon's got the latest from Scandal. Years. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Guess who else is back from holiday? Chang! Ah, oh, Senor Chang. Hello, Guy Williams. Hi, Ch- guys. Chang and Clint. Um, what am I, a duck? Oh, hi, Sharon. Hello, Chang. Did you actually not acknowledge the wonderful Shaz dog? No, he ignored me. Apologise to her right now. I'm sorry, Sharon. You should be. <laughs> I just smacked Chang on the back of the head. You deserve that, mate. You you respect Sharon. Hang on, did you get us a present? Because Clint yeah. got us a present from America. Did you get us a present? Uh, he got Hellion Customs. <laughs> did you actually? <laughs> yeah, I bought. <laughs> right now, help us out. 0800 the edge or text in the 3343. What we thought we'd do mm-hmm. is we would educationally catch. Uh, Chang and Clint up on everything they've missed in oh, the last week. Good, because I made a um, resolution while I was in America. What was that? I don't do email anymore. <laughs> so I have. if anyone's sent me anything important, haven't seen it, maybe call up for this feature. It's I'm, been a really frustrating day trying to ask Clint questions because he's not doing email anymore. Not a lot has happened, Chang. I, I heard some rumours that Auckland was out of power for two days. <laughs> some rumours. <laughs> what do you mean is you it? read stuff.co.nz yeah. and yes, that did happen. I where was that juicy rumour going around? I heard <laughs> something about chocolate milk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus, these yeah. are the big stories. There's a chocolate milk epidemic at the moment. They've run out. Was it X Factor auditions over the weekend? Yeah. yeah God, these are boring stories. <laughs> 100 The Edge or text to the 3343. If you've got better things to uh, to share with us, um, Ebola, that's hot right now. Oh, no, that was hot in America too. So I'll let you know. Like, we, we didn't mean to make a bad joke there. No, they got it in America. So it was. While I was there, it was bigger news over there. Oh, do we need to quarantine you? No, no, I got it in Texas. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got a weird rash down below, but that's probably not something that you guys need to worry about. <laughs> totally but I thought, not a bowl. Obviously, our show shares everything, so I'll just let you know, uh, okay. Clint. Yeah, thank you. Uh, um, I got the hiccups for like 45 minutes the other week, and I thought I was going to die of hiccups. Okay, that's okay. Okay, on the show, we met John Kerwin, and he was <gasps> amazing. Yeah, he blew our mind. Sharon said it was the best interview she's ever done in her life, and yeah. you didn't even get to be here for it. Yeah. Sucked in. That also made it better. It was on our podcast on Friday. Oh, our podcast went to number three in the chart. Great news. That was bloody good news. And it was because you weren't on it. So oh. as a result, you're no longer allowed on the podcast <laughs> if you want to ever add, again. If you want to add something, call now. Oh, 800 The Edge or text us to 3343. <laughs> Play a song, Clint, before he keeps telling Megan, you that stuff. Megan said that uh, John Kerwin was like Liam Neeson mixed with George Clooney because he's so wise. <laughs> <laughs> and we've already got someone on the line. Kate, Katie, sorry. What did the boys miss out on? Oh, hang on, Katie. This lady. Oh, hey. Yeah, there you go. Go Hi. now. <laughs> hey. Oh, there's this chick from out where we live, and um, she was rushed to hospital with sore stomach. Okay. And um, five or ten minutes later, before the doctors could assess her, she was screaming to her mum, my appendix is burst, my appendix is burst. Yeah. And she couldn't stop uh, going to the loo. Okay. Uh, <gasps> five minutes later, she gave birth to an 8.5-pound baby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Katie, we need to, I need to ask a question. I uh, don't know how to wear this out being offensive, but is she a smaller girl where it would be quite obvious if she was pregnant or...? No, I don't think she was, no. <laughs> no. Okay. What, part of, what part of New Zealand are you calling from, can I ask? Um, 
West Ish Auckland. <laughs> that narrows it down for you. Classic. <laughs> that is insane. That sounds like something that everybody missed out on, not just Chang and I. And beautiful. That's great. Mm. Oh, okay. I, I think that contact Women's Week Plan makes some money. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it, Katie. Let's do it. Hold the line. We'll hook you up with a uh, a double pass to go to the movies to see our must-see movie this week, Love Rosie, which is going to be in cinemas on the 23rd of October. Let's take some more. G'day, Jake. What did you think that Clint and Chang missed out on when they are on holiday? Well, he missed out on Oh, Cool Cumber Williams. Oh, Cool Cumber. <laughs> cool. We, even, uh, we even had some, some new show imaging made up for this Clint, and this was uh, Guy's new nickname. Cool Cumber, Sheridan Clint, Clint on that's, the edge. That's not going to catch on. Jake, what did you, <laughs> think, what did you think of Cool you Cumber? You correctly. Do you reckon it's going to be I the new... I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. Appreciate it. His name's Jake. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Jake Cool Cumber Jr. <laughs> Oh man, I appreciate the nickname. I just came what with a new CJ? nickname. I could uh, or awesome, Sam or orangutan, like an awesome <laughs> orangutan. Which one would you prefer, Jake? Um, I'll go for the junior. Okay. Oh, cool, Cumber Junior. Appreciate it, bro. And what about you, Rose? What did Clinton Chang miss out on? Uh, they missed out on seeing JJ drunk at the long room on Friday, <laughs> hanging out with some friends. So this is a bar, uh, this is a bar in, in Auckland, in Ponsonby. What was JJ doing when she was so drunk? Who was she with? Um, well, she keeps good company. Like, she makes good decisions. So she was hanging out with Jono from Step Dog. Well, okay, we need to talk about this. Were they kissing or holding hands or looking at Because I swear to God that JJ's having an affair with Jono Kenyon from Step Dog because she posts more photos out on dates with him than she does on dates with Dominic. Okay, well, I'm not surprised because he's smoking, so, you know. Why is everyone so attracted to Step Dave? <laughs> um, what is it there to love about Step Dave? Okay, yeah. I think I'm also Thank just jealous because they never invite me to hang out. I think I think this is, a, this is a plausible theory, though, that JJ's in an open marriage with Step Dave. <laughs> did, they, did, did, they look, did they look lovey-dovey? Uh, not when I saw them, no. Oh, no. But he JJ... does have a really hot friend, so oh, okay, I don't know. Okay, maybe maybe he was their beard we're trying getting, to hide their relationship. We're getting, we're getting some... Yeah. We're getting somewhere with it anyway. <laughs> Did you learn? Did you learn from that? Are yeah. you educated as to what happened? Yeah, I feel like I never went away now. In a nutshell, someone had birth, gave birth without knowing it. Guy got a stupid name and Chang, <laughs> uh, and JJ's having an affair with Step Dave. You missed <laughs> nothing. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio, direct from interviewing Lord in Los Angeles, the wonderful, the amazing David Ferrier! Thanks, guys. That was energetic. Thank you. I can't live up to that. You can't live up to that, and good luck, mate, because let's be honest, you're never going to live up to that. Damn it, you screwed me right from the start. (laughs) Don't don't worry, Guy just gets intimidated by anyone that's tall with glasses that comes in here, so just ignore him. Because there there was a time, once upon a time, where we did get confused for each other a couple of times. Tall glasses, a bit of facial hair. Same person. thing, Farrier. I know, it was distressing. It was very Mm. flattering for me, and I was stuck (laughs) with it. I I still (laughs) often say that I'm David Farrier when when the opportunity arises. Yeah, Yeah, when you're in trouble, when you're in massive (laughs) trouble. And then you start talking. Talking and people quickly realise that you're not David Barrier. <laughs> so, David, you've been across... I'll just uh, ignore that insult. You've been across <laughs> in America uh, interviewing the wonderful, the amazing Lord. Yes, I sat down with Lord, uh, and that was a really unique experience, because she is such a... I mean, she's everywhere, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. You're actually mad. You know, we're interviewing you right now. You know you're a big thing when people do interviews <laughs> based on the fact that they met you one time, yeah. which is what you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm basically right. Riding on Lord's fame. You only need to follow her mum on Instagram to so- know how big a deal she is. Oh, because Sonia. So- yeah, Sonia. Something that happened at the show, Sonia came out to the sound desk, yeah. so plugged in filming a bit of the show, and Sonia walked out there, and kids were coming up, trembling, to, to Sonia going, uh, uh, are you Lord's mum? <laughs> like this? Yeah. And she's like, she takes it all in her stride, are but she's loving it. Are you the royal vagina? <laughs> Whoa! I have a a theory on that, though, because these will be 17-year-old kids coming up to her, um, Mm. and she produced Lord, the 17-year-old superstar, and I think they want a bit of the magic. They're like, hey, you know what you told Lord to make her a superstar? Can you say it to me (laughs) as well? Like, a little bit, yeah. Did you catch up with Lord after South Park or before? Just after the first, because she's been on twice, hasn't she? So she's been on two episodes, so I caught up with her after the first episode, Yeah. and she she said, like, she loved it. Yeah, Yeah. so now she just needs to be on the Simpsons. 
Simpsons and she's clocked life. And she's pretty much clocked life. I think actually she probably has clocked life already. Time to retire. We <laughs> but like, wait, the thing is, and I don't know if you you got this when you talked to her, but she's like, you you think what you were like at seventeen? Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, I was a mess, yeah. you know. And, mm. and and seeing what she's done, it's you still you still are a mess, mind. mate. Don't use. Past well, I was thinking like, nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's changed, I, right? Yeah. But she's so together, and she's seventeen, and I I constantly have admiration for that. Same, Absolutely. Same, but she does make you feel like a bit of a failure, doesn't she? Oh, oh completely. <laughs> I mean, she, she, you either look at it, but you can see what you can achieve with your life, or you can see where you've failed miserably at every turn. <laughs> Did, when I was 17, I was like, wanted to see what smoking was like, and I, my parents wouldn't let me try it, so I smoked a tea bag. Like, she's doing way better than what I was doing oh at 17. God, that's hilarious. That is really depressing. And it was even worse, it was a herbal tea bag, and I put it in normal paper, I almost lit my face on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad day. So, you, you, uh, you've seen the new Lord show, the one that's coming to New Zealand. Yeah, the one I have. that is, still has some tickets for at the moment. Some of the bits, the breakdowns and some of the songs that she adds in are just uh, mind blowing. Cool. Oh, and Yellow Flicker Beat, when she brought that out. Yeah. It, was, it had been out for seven days when I saw her play, and people just went so ballistic. Wow. And instantly, wow, cell phones awesome. out. We made this as default at shows, but cell phones were out, and there were just flickering lights yeah. everywhere, and it was epic. That awesome. is awesome. I well, can't wait for it to come. Yeah, and it's this, you're going to be talking about the show with her, doing clips of the show. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, tonight, tonight Campbell Live. yeah, Campbell Live. It's sort of a uh, just sit down with her, just having a yarn, really, just about what life is like as her, how she's staying sane. And what channels Campbell Live on? Is that still on three? Uh, I think it's on three. It's still yeah, on three. That's go? good to how hear. Many cha- yeah, one, two. It's on three. Yeah, it's channel three. three, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. All right, mm. Lord, Lord. Booyah, ladies and gentlemen. That was the wonderful, the amazing man who's met Lord David Ferrier. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint on the bloody edge. And we've also got a great new segment for you. It's happening right now. We call it the Joel Hole. It started last week, and basically, it's where our mate Joel, the bogan from the office, comes on in and gives us his stupid opinions on stupid things. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Joel Hole. What the hell was that? That's a sound effect for the Joel like hole. Well, how yeah. else do you think we've got to get? We've got to get into the hole. <laughs> Joel, first question, first topical question. Are you worried about a bowler, mate? Uh, not really. Why not? He right. only uses plates at home. Lol, carry on. That's what I was going to say. I have a bowl of wheat thanks every day and I seem okay. Oh, that is appalling, mate. Why do we even have this stupid segment? Okay, here's an important question. Why did you get your dad last Father's Day? I gave him my presents as a present because I don't see him very often, so I went down and saw him. Where'd you go and visit your dad? Uh, he lives down in the mighty Waikato. Oh, beautiful. Hamilton. Yeah. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. So your present no. was a 45-minute drive along State Highway 1? No. I stayed the whole weekend and I had to go to dinner with my what grandparents at Villa Grads and stuff like that. The fun. last thing I'd want if I was your dad was a stupid video uh, visit from my dumbass son, Joel. <laughs> okay, here, here's an important question. And this is something all of New Zealand has been waiting for. Yeah. What happened to the missing Malaysian Airlines flight? Ooh. Aliens. <laughs> Do you genuinely believe that? I genuinely believe in aliens. I don't know, necessarily know if that was that, but it's pretty weird that something could pr- pretty disappear like that. But, you know, it's, there's a lot of ocean out there, so, you know. What do you think the aliens did with them? I don't know, just experiments or something like that, or <laughs> like maybe you know how like I think the aliens look at us like yeah. like we look you know how we go to the zoo yeah. and we see the monkeys throwing shit at each other yeah that's yeah. how aliens look at us we're not gonna go hang yeah. out with us are they I've never <laughs> I've never seen <laughs> monkeys throwing shit at each other what zoo are you visiting the Auckland Zoo. The Auckland Zoo. And yeah. you, can you go there and see monkeys throwing shit? Well, it, no, it's kind of just the saying, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. You've, ne- you've never been to a zoo, have you? No, but I've seen monkeys... You don't even know where the zoo is, <laughs> do I've you? I've seen monkeys throwing shit on the internet. You just... <laughs> <laughs> By going to the zoo, you meant you took your cousin to a computer and showed him some stuff and on threw YouTube. some shit at him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay, <laughs> here's a would you rather final question. Would you rather speak any language in the world fluently or be able to talk to animals? Uh, talk to animals. Why? Uh, I guess they're probably a better conversation than half of the people <laughs> <weren't getting. laughs> No, they wouldn't be. If you were talking to an animal, first of all, what animal would you talk to first? Mm. Dolphin. And no. how, can you please do a demonstration of how you would talk to the dolphin? <laughs> What did you just say to the dolphin? What's up, bro? I want to go get some waves. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Joel Hole. Joel, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hey! Down the hole, everybody. We're going back up. One more level, one more level. We're still in the hole. <laughs> oh, no, I'm still in the hole. I'm stuck. No, you're, you're staying here, mate. No, you can't fit out the hole. Get me out of Joel's hole. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Itch. When have your parents given you feedback that's been a little bit 
a little bit on the nose, a little bit too harsh. I got this from my mum last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, she was like, I heard, Ch- Ch- I heard Chang's overseas. And I was like, yeah, mum, fantastic. Have you been listening to the show? I was so excited. And she was like, yes, I have. And you played a song by a lady that was terrible. And you said you loved it. So I went back to listening to Kim Hill. On national radio. So my mum hated, <laughs> hated our show with a passion. A that passion. that was her feedback on your on your big job. That's your yeah. job, mate. That's what you do. Yeah, and I'm supposed to say I love the music. It'd be weird if I hated all the music. It was, I enjoy, I enjoy, it was the, the we, we actually wound back to find out what song I said I loved. It was Hilary Duff. I thought it was a good song. Oh, I actually don't a, mind that song either. It's a great honest. song. My parents are like that, though. They're very brutally honest. Yes. And that's what I wanted to find out if anyone else experiences as well. 0800 The Edge or text in the 3343. When have you got bad... Parental feedback. Lewis, what was your bad parental feedback? Uh, my mum basically told me I was too dumb to take history. <laughs> Did you say, well, that's your fault for not getting me in Carta 95, mum? <laughs> <laughs> no, I ended up taking ICC instead. She thought I might pass that one. What's uh, ICC? Uh, computers. ICC uh. also. Oh, that's pretty good. Do you, do you think you're too dumb to do history? No, I just... Too much effort involved. Yeah. Pop quiz. What date was the Treaty of Waitangi signed? Uh, the fifth or the sixth? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, do you not know either? I thought no. you were going to say 1942. I don't know when it was signed. 1942. Know, yeah. Thanks for your call, Lewis. We don't um, know either. Okay, no, you do, it's not, no th- if your mum says that, try harder. Like, you can do it. Prove your mum wrong. Kim, what was the bad parental feedback you got? Oh, my mother. I was, um, I'd been single for about four years and I went home and I said to mum, I'm a nice person. And why can't I meet a nice guy? And she just looked at me and she said, darling, I just don't think you can find a nice guy in the places that you hang in, hang out in. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you hanging out in? Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I was in the hospitality industry, so we, we just used to work and shift work and party all night. So we were just always at nightclubs and... You know, nightclubs. It must have been about twenty years ago because we've had one of those in a long time. <laughs> not, I wasn't a gym bunny or anything like that. Oh, it's not that bad unless you didn't say because you had an ugly face, Kim. That yeah, would have been real that bad. Been worse. Thanks to you, cool beauty. <laughs> hey, Treaty of Waitangi was signed on the sixth of February, eighteen forty. There you go. He said the sixth. Hey, Lana, what was your bad parental feedback? Um, I asked Mum. Uh, I put on a new dress that I absolutely loved. I said, Mum, what do you think? She goes, Jeez, girl, you've packed on the pounds. <laughs> <laughs> The worst thing was after that, though, Dad walks in the room and he goes, Jesus, what are you been eating? And I said, why? And he goes, well, you've put on the pounds, girl. And I'm like, oh, my God, I hate you right now. <laughs> oh, that's so, that mean. Is so mean. I would, I would, if that was me, I would cry. Did you cry? No, I just sort of walked up and was like, don't like your parents anymore. And my dad has for me now after that and he calls me fat jelly oh, <laughs> this is messed up your I dad's think, amazing I think dads are just clueless though Lana my dad uh, my, we were at a restaurant once and my mum goes should we get dessert and dad looked at me one of my sisters because it was me one of my sisters and my mum and goes I don't think we really need dessert do you guys think we need dessert <laughs> and we didn't get dessert yeah. it was a bad day yeah, my dad does the same and I'm not fat like I'm not huge he no we don't think he just thinks it's funny yeah. Yeah. we don't think you're fat Lana we think you're gorgeous you're beautiful girl oh, you're beautiful yeah. Thank you so much for your call. Julie, uh, what was yours? Hey, mine, uh, um, mine was when I was 16, my mother had said to me, if you get pregnant to your boyfriend, who I was with at the time, I'd know you'd make a good mum. <laughs> to yeah. a 16-year-old? 16-year-old. Oh, oh. I mean, at least she's supportive. On one hand, hey, at least she's supportive, and I'm yeah. sure you would yeah, make a good mum. On the other hand... reverse psychology I'd ever gotten. Oh, maybe that was what <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah. It's probably more likely. That is probably yeah. more likely. Maybe yeah, parents yeah. should try that. Maybe parents should start telling their kids how cool sex is, and then they won't have it. <laughs> like, you know what me and your dad love? Sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys should go and try it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm never having yeah. sex. <laughs> That's way too much information. Kelsey, what, does, what was your bad parental feedback? Um, well, it's my mum, actually, and she's constantly telling me that I'm too stupid for anything and that I can't read and all this sort of stuff. And yet at school, I get really good reports. Oh, oh This one's just sad. Kelsey, it's not even funny. That's mean. You Can should tell you... your mum to being, stop being such a bully. That's not very <laughs> nice. Punch she's your mum in this. always done it, ever since I was little. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh. Don't punch your mum. Okay. No, your that, was, that was stupid advice. Your mum's I, I prob- wouldn't do that to my mum. You do not know my mum. Your you, mum... You, if, she's, if you were me, you would not 
want to punch my mum. Okay, no, I take it all back. Yeah, well, Kelsey, back. you sound like you're very, very intelligent, so just ignore her. We're going to hook you up with a prize, though, because that, we're going to reward you for being awesome. We're going to hook you up with our must-have DVD, Edge of Tomorrow, which has Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt in it. Oh, it's really good. Oh, I just watched sweet. it on the plane. You'll like that. Stop bragging about your trip, mate. I Thank went to you. America. Kelsey, we'll send it out to you, and if you want to win a copy as well, go to theedge.co.nz. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. You got to see Justin Timberlake last night, as mm-hmm. did I. Was yes. it your first Justin Timberlake experience? Yes, I didn't go last time because I thought he was a dick. Um, <laughs> and I used to really not like so him. So his status has changed. Yeah, What's his status now, at now? But I think as I got older, I understood his sense of humour more. And I really appreciate him and I really like him now. I thought he was amazing last night. One of my favourite moments was he was like talking to the crowd. And he looked down and he saw the sign that someone wrote and it said, it's my 21st birthday. And then he like started asking, he was like, is it your birthday? Is it how old are you? And then he jumped off the She's stage. Like, 21, read the sign. He jumped <laughs> off the stage and he was like, happy 21st birthday, Krista. And he like took selfies of himself on the stage. Then he jumped off and he took selfies with her. And then he realized that it was on video the whole time. So she's got this eight-second video of those two posing for a photo together. She should put that on the internet because that would blow up, I Is reckon. her name Krista? I thought I think he said Krista. Oh, uh, that makes more sense. Maybe I said Because I, thought, her name, I, I thought he said her name was Krishna. And I got real racist in my head. And I'm like, she doesn't look like a Krishna. <laughs> You know, like you just expect someone who's Christian. Yeah, no, no, look no, no, no. You weren't right. You yeah. no, you sold that wrong. You yeah. weren't racist to assume that someone called Krishna is possibly going to be white, uh, yeah. brown. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You know, you made it weird, mate. You made it weird. Yeah, I, do, anyway, I, I, let's yeah, move I was on. trying hey, to apologise. Hey, you know you, how you know, guys. You know how sometimes we have that rule of things we stay, say in our head and we tease it in our little audience. <laughs> yeah. That was one of those things. Sorry, I've been on, been, uh, on, been, on, the, been on holiday, but rusty. Than, Justin Timberlake, better than Miley, or worse than Miley. Oh. Uh, a whole another league than Miley. Oh, I thought because I thought Miley was pretty good though. She's got an amazing voice. I thought Miley was incredible when she actually sung and stopped talking about how wasted she was. <laughs> yeah. Um. But Justin Timberlake, start to finish, I thought was incredible, and I really liked the way he arranged his set list. If you're going tonight, he goes on stage around about eight thirty, and the way he does his set list is that he'll do a song that you may know that you might not know, and then straight after that he'll do a banger, and then maybe one maybe you won't know, and then a banger, and then towards the end it's like bang 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 in a row. It's all. Awesome. My favourite bit was when he covered Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. It was so good. Yeah. What it song was, did he do? What song did he do? Um, relax, freak out, shake your body down to the ground. St- I've never heard show. that. I don't think that is Jackson 5. I think that is a Jackson 5 breakdown in the middle. Uh, I don't, oh. Shake your body down to it the ground. It was obviously st- very memorable. Shout, and, no, I don't uh, think it is Jackson 5, sh- but they did do a Jackson 5 like dance routine in the middle. Which shout really out cool. to all the lucky bastards who are going uh, to my, tonight and Wednesday night as well. Yeah, if you want to still get tickets here, I'm available on ticketmaster.co.nz. I highly recommend you go. It's amazing. The latest in Scandal's up next. It's The oh, Edge. Oh, I forgot. To, can I add in my story real quick? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay, quick. real quick. So... My friend was in the crowd, and he put on Facebook last night that he took a photo of Jessica Biel in the crowd, and she was there, like, watching the show, and he took a photo of her. Her bodyguard came over and made him delete the photo. <laughs> Rah, that's, that's illegal. That's going I know. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Edgy. We're not just welcoming Clint back uh, this week. We also welcome back senior producer Chang Hung. Chang, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Guy Williams, and thanks for playing that music. That's not um, appropriate. That was not me. That was Clint. Um, Chang, Prove welcome it. back <laughs> from holiday. Where'd you go on holiday again? I went to Bali, uh, Denpasa, Indonesia. Okay, okay. Beautiful. Mm. You were in Bali. Yeah. You were on holiday? Yep. How many times did people ask you for pool towels? <laughs> You have no idea how many people thought I was Indonesian. They started yeah. talking to me in their language, and I was like, no, no talk. <laughs> <laughs> me no, no speak uh, your thing, language. The worst thing, they speak broken English, so I kind of adopted the, the way of speaking. What, as opposed to the fluent <laughs> English you normally <laughs> spell on this radio station? Oh, yes. how I miss the racism. <laughs> Chang, um, in all seriousness, how was your holiday, one being... Uh, terrible and hmm. two being amazing. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear, mate. So I could have gone for a half, but yeah. It was your first uh, holiday away with your hot babe girlfriend as well, and she had to look after you when you got motion sick on a hydro slide. How was that? <laughs> yeah, we went, went, to, went on to one of the uh, Asia's top hydro slides, and then well, for one of the slides, I went backwards. <laughs> and next you minute, are a rebel. I know. Did you just do a neck minute? <laughs> Did going backwards on the hydro slide <laughs> send you into a time machine <laughs> back to 2009? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it was an eye-opener for her when I chucked all, right 
by the slide. I, 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 I didn't chuck you in s- the slide, so it was it was safe. Positive. Was See, the slide for adults or for children? Adults. It was an extreme five, the highest they could go. So. And, and you went backwards down an extreme yeah. five, man. Mm. Wow, it serves so you right. Did Sasha go on it as well, or just you? No, she did go on it, and then at the end, she has a photo of me look, not looking really well at the end of the slide. See, I need her to point that out, because, mm. you know, most photos... So, <laughs> so that was the that was the uh, that was the high point of the trip. What was the low point? Oh, the low point went to a uh, a uh, night safari. Yeah, and yeah, it was just awful. No, lots of waiting. Why were they mean to the animals? No, no, they were not mean. There was just lots of waiting, and they charged us almost seventy two US dollars no, for no, it. No, okay, okay, so. okay. This is not what you told me off here. You were a bit racist off here. You were blaming the bloody Australians, weren't you? Oh yes, the Australians. They're horrible people to travel with. You Co- said it. Quote: They were hogging the elephants. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 the night trip. <laughs> The night safari, we've got to t- oh, touch some of the animals how, in the zoo. How do they How do they hog the elephant that's being kept in a safari against its will? Okay. Okay. The Aussies think they own Bali. That's it, another thing. I can also, imagine, that you thought you owned Bali. I can, I can imagine you in the background going, excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Australian, stop hogging the no, elephants. No, it would have been impatient change. It's like, oh, oh. Everyone, everyone, else wants to have a time with the elephant. I mean, God, we all paid, I paid $72. I haven't even gone across with the elephant yet. Chang, welcome back. It's good to have you back. One final question. Did you pass your pal Corby? No, I couldn't even find her. What a, wa- <laughs> what a waste uh, of a trap. And a his girlfriend was there. Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. Earlier in the show, we were talking about whether or not we thought JJ... And Step Dave, John O'Kenyon, were having an affair. Yeah. Because they said you go on dates all the time. And somebody, <laughs> this is a great theory. Some, somebody rang up earlier in the show saying, what do we miss when Chang and Clint were on... Uh, Chang and Clint... Yeah, that's your names. Yeah. We're on holiday, and someone said, I saw JJ real wasted at the long room in Ponsonby with John O'Kenyon from Step Dave. Can we please just call him Step Dave from now on? Like, I'm sick of confusing yeah. his name with his real name. No one cares what his real name is. Okay, He'll just so know Step Dave. Let's, let's investigate this, because we've got a few texts about that saying how she posts more pictures of, of Step Dave than she does of Dominic. Yeah. So let, let's ring up and just ask her if she's having an affair. Maybe well, that's how journalism works. No? Go to the source before mm. you start um, bandying too many rumours around. Okay, what should my journalist name be? Sasha um, uh, Mick. Oh, no, I'm just going to say okay, Sasha go McNeil. Okay, Hello. Good afternoon. Is this uh, is this JJ Feeney? Yes. JJ Feeney, it's Sasha McCunchash from the New Zealand Herald. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Thanks. That's How good. How can I help you? New Zealand Herald's my favourite newspaper. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Hey, I'm just wondering, there are some rumours going on around about you being really uh, intoxicated at the long room on, on Friday night with Step Dave. Um, that might be a little bit true. Yeah, because do you, are you aware there's a rumour going around that you guys are having an affair? <laughs> um, really? <laughs> wow. Um, so, I'm not aware of the rumours, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. Uh, so are you saying to me an exclusive for the New Zealand Herald, JJ, that you're having an affair with John O'Kenyon from Step Dave? <laughs> Um, no, I'm not. I'm not I mean, admitting we could, that. We could, You're going to have to talk to my lawyers about this. We, <laughs> we, we, we could understand because your husband's a bit of a dick. So if you wanted to have an affair, that would be okay. But is it true? Well, um... Because I heard that you touched his crotch. <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> I, heard, I heard that you I don't remember his... doing that, but hey, I was drunk. I, I heard, I heard that you flashed your titties. <laughs> um, yeah, well, um, geez, you might be getting me confused with someone else because I haven't actually flashed my boobs since JJ, JJ, about last week. JJ, JJ, you're a liar. We know that you're having an affair with John O'Kenyon. Just hang out. Just call us and invite us to hang out next time. <laughs> Sharon, is, are you jealous? Karen. She's extremely <laughs> jealous. She's so she's so keen on John O'Kenyon from Step Dave really? as you're living her dream. No, well, we got it. We, we did get a call earlier in the show, JJ, when, uh, where someone said that you guys were looking very lovey dovey at Long Room on Friday night. So we just wanted to check well, check what's going on. I gotta say, I gotta say that that is not the case because uh, me and John are really good friends, but we are definitely not lovey dovey. JJ, JJ I don't you. one final question: Was that yep. the best? prank call you've ever received in your life. <laughs> it is, especially since um, we've got um, caller display that came up as the Edge hotline. On my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you were, JJ, I was so excited because I thought that someone finally fell for one of my accents. This is the first day ever. Thanks, JJ. We're going to keep the rumour going. See you. Bye. Thanks for okay. coming. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint on the Edge.